Hello readers, welcome back to Newton's library. Friends, in this video, I'll be presenting to you the summary of the book titled The Psychology of Money, written by Morgan Housel. This book gives you timeless lessons on wealth, greed and happiness. The premise of this book is that doing well with money has a little to do with how smart you are and a lot to do with how you behave. You see, a genius who loses control of his emotions can be a financial disaster. At the same time, ordinary folks with no financial education can be wealthy if they have a handful of behavioral skills. We think about and are taught about money in ways that are too much like physics, that is, with rules and laws, and not like psychology, that is, with emotions and nuances. But physics is guided by laws, and finance is different. It's guided by people's behaviors. The author says that financial success is not a hard science. It's a soft skill, where how you behave is more important than what you know. And he calls this soft skill the psychology of money. In this book, through many short stories, the author tries to convince you that soft skills are more important than the technical side of money. So friends, in this book, there are 18 wealth lessons, which we'll be discussing now one by one in this video. Number one, no one is crazy. Friends, each one of us has one's own model of how this world works or operates. And this model is prepared by us after gaining experience in our individual lives. You know stuff about money that I don't and vice versa. You go through life with different beliefs, goals and forecasts than I do. That's not because one of us is smarter than the other or has better information. It's because we've had different lives shaped by different experiences. Your personal experiences with money may be a very low percentage of what's happened in the world, but maybe 80% of how you think the world works. You see, Every decision people make with money is justified by taking the information they have at the moment and how they process it into their unique mental model of how the world works. We all do crazy things with money because we are all relatively new to this game and what looks crazy to you might make sense to me. No one is crazy. We all make decisions based on our own unique experiences that seem to make sense to us in a given moment. People from different generations, raised by different parents who earned different incomes and held different values, in different parts of the world, born into different economies, experiencing different job markets with different incentives and different degrees of luck, learn very different lessons. So no one is crazy in the way they deal with their money. It's a result of lot many differences people have around the globe. And that's why they behave the way they do. Number two, luck and risk. Friends, every outcome in life is guided by forces other than individual effort. So don't have the wrong assumption that 100% of outcomes can be attributed to efforts and decisions. The world is too complex for that. Here in this world, luck and risk are the reality. We often overlook these two important factors when judging others or our own financial success because they are so hard to measure and hard to accept. When judging others, attributing success to luck makes you look jealous and mean, even if we know it exists. And when judging yourself, attributing success to luck can be too demoralizing to accept. But you should give luck and risk proper respect. You should, in fact, like risk because it pays off over time. But at the same time, you should be paranoid of ruinous risk because it prevents you from taking future risks that will pay off over time. You see, you are one person in a game with 7 billion other people and infinite moving parts. The accidental impact of actions outside of your control can be more consequential than the ones you consciously take. 
So be careful because there is a very thin line between inspiringly bold and foolishly reckless and it is only visible with hindsight. Be humble when things are going right because realize it's not as good as it looks. You are not invincible. The risk involved can turn your story around just as quickly. Be forgiving and leave room for understanding when they go wrong because it's never as bad as it looks. A bad investment here and a missed financial goal there won't wipe you out so you can keep playing until the odds fall in your favor. Also, be careful who you praise and admire and who you look down upon and wish to avoid becoming. Focus less on specific individuals and case studies and more on broad patterns. Focusing on broad patterns will give you actionable takeaways. Number 3. Never Enough Friends, life isn't any fun without a sense of enough. Know when you have enough. Enough is not too little. The idea of having enough might look like conservatism, leaving opportunity and potential on the table. But enough is realizing that an insatiable appetite for more will push you to the point of regret. So stop moving the goalpost, though it is hard but develop this financial skill. Remember, happiness is just results minus expectations. If expectations rise with results, there is no logic in striving for more because you'll feel the same after putting in extra effort. It gets dangerous when the taste of having more, more money, more power, more prestige increases ambition faster than satisfaction. Then, stop social comparison. The ceiling of social comparison is so high that virtually no one will ever hit it, which means it's a battle that can never be won. The only way to win is to not fight. Accept that you might have enough even if it's less than those around you. There's no reason to risk what you have and need for what you don't have and don't need. There are many things never worth risking, no matter the potential gain. Always maintain a lifestyle below what you can afford. That is the key to happiness in life. Number 4. Confounding Compounding Friends, do you know $81.5 billion of Warren Buffett's $84.5 billion net worth came after his 65th birthday and he had started investing at the age of 10. Our minds are not built to handle such absurdities. His skill is investing but his secret is time. That's how compounding works. If you want to do better as an investor, the single most powerful thing you can do is increase your time horizon. Time is the most powerful force in investing. You don't need tremendous force to create tremendous results. Remember, good investing isn't necessarily about earning the highest returns because the highest returns tend to be one-off hits that can't be repeated. It's about earning pretty good returns that you can stick with and which can be repeated for the longest period of time. That's when compounding runs wild. Number 5. Getting wealthy versus staying wealthy. Friends, getting money is one thing, keeping it is another. There are a million ways to get wealthy, but there is only one way to stay wealthy and that is the combination of frugality and paranoia. Getting money requires taking risks, being optimistic and putting yourself out there. But keeping money requires the opposite of taking risk. It requires humility and fear that what you have made can be taken away from you just as fast. It requires frugality and an acceptance that at least some of what you have made is because of luck. So you cannot rely upon past success to repeat indefinitely. Friends, money success can be summarized in a single word and that is survival. 
the ability to stick around for a long time without wiping out or being forced to give up is what makes the biggest difference. This should be the cornerstone of your strategy, whether it's in investing or your career or a business you own. There are two reasons why a survival mentality is so key with money. One is the obvious. Few gains are so great that they are worth wiping yourself out over. The other is the math of compounding. Compounding works only if you can give an asset years and years to grow. Now, while applying the survival mindset, you should learn and appreciate three things. Number one, more than wanting big returns, be financially unbreakable. If you are unbreakable, you'll get the biggest returns because you'll be able to stick around long enough for compounding to work wonders. Compounding doesn't rely on earning big returns. Merely good returns sustained uninterrupted for the longest period of time, especially in times of chaos and havoc, will always win. Number 2. Planning is important, but the most important part of every plan is to plan on the plan, not going according to plan. Number 3. Develop a barbelled personality. That is, one who is optimistic about the future, but paranoid about what will prevent you from getting to the future. A mindset that can be paranoid and optimistic at the same time is hard to maintain because seeing things as black or white takes less effort than accepting nuances. But you need short-term paranoia to keep you alive long enough to exploit long-term optimism. Number 6. Tales you win Friends, tales have tremendous influence in finance. A lot of things in business and investing work this way. So what are tales? Tales means a small number of events or a small percent of all actions. You see, tales can account for the majority of outcomes. You can be wrong half the time and still make a fortune. You should not overact when things fail because it is absolutely normal for a lot of things to fail. Anything that is huge, profitable, famous or influential is the result of a tail event, that is, an outlying one in thousands or millions event. Remember, tails drive everything. Number 7. Freedom Friends, people like to feel that they are in control that is, being in the driver's seat. Money's greatest intrinsic value is its ability to give you control over your time. You see, from unspent assets comes a level of independence and autonomy that give you greater control over what you can do and when you can do it. It gives you the ability to do what you want, when you want, with who you want, for as long as you want, which is freedom in true sense. It is priceless and it is the highest dividend money pays. You see, the highest form of wealth is the ability to wake up every morning and say, I can do whatever I want today. People want to become wealthier to make them happier. Happiness is a complicated subject because everyone's different. But if there is a common denominator in happiness, a universal fuel of joy, it's that people want to control their lives. More than your salary, more than the size of your house, more than the prestige of your job. Control over doing what you want, when you want to, with the people you want to, is the broadest lifestyle variable that makes people happy. So align money towards a life that lets you do what you want, when you want, with who you want, where you want, and for as long as you want. Remember, your kids don't want your money or what your money buys as much as they want you. Number 8. Man in the car paradox It's a subtle recognition that people generally aspire to be respected and admired by others. But you see, there is a paradox here. 
People tend to want wealth to signal to others that they should be liked and admired. But in reality, those other people often bypass admiring you. They don't admire you for your fancy possessions. Instead, they use your wealth as a benchmark for their own desire to be liked and admired. You think that others are admiring you driving a Mercedes or a Lamborghini, but nobody is even bothered to see who is sitting in the driver's seat. They admire the car itself and imagine themselves driving the car and getting admired. The point here is not to abandon the pursuit of wealth. The point here is to develop a sense of what serves your purpose. If a Honda or Swift can serve you well, then why to splurge your hard-earned money on a Ferrari? Friends, no one is impressed with your possessions as much as you are. If respect and admiration are your goal, be careful how you seek it. Humility, kindness and empathy will bring you more respect than horsepower ever will. Number 9. Wealth is what you don't see. We tend to judge wealth by what we see because that's the information we have in front of us. We can't see people's bank accounts or brokerage statements. So we rely on outward appearances to gauge financial success. Cars, homes, Instagram photos. The truth is that wealth is what you don't see. Wealth is the nice cars not purchased, the diamonds not bought, the watches not worn, the clothes foregone and the first class upgrade declined. Wealth is financial assets that haven't yet been converted into the stuff you see. But that's not how we think about wealth, because you can't contextualize what you can't see. Friends, the only way to be wealthy is to not spend the money that you do have. It's not just the only way to accumulate wealth, it's the very definition of wealth. We should know the difference between wealthy and rich because not knowing the difference is a source of countless poor money decisions. You see, rich is a current income. Someone driving a $100,000 car is certainly rich because even if he purchased the car with debt or a loan, you need a certain level of income to afford the monthly payment. Same with those who live in big homes. It's not hard to spot rich people. They often go out of their way to make themselves known. On the other hand, wealth is hidden. It's income not spent. Wealth is an option not yet taken to buy something later. Its value lies in offering you options, flexibility and growth to one day purchase more stuff than you could right now. Again, the point here is not to buy nothing at all with the money you have. The point here is not buying fancy things to show off. Because friends, spending money to show people how much money you have is the fastest way to have less money. Number 10. Save money Friends, building wealth has little to do with your income or investment returns and lots to do with your savings rate. A good amount of savings brings you independence and autonomy. If you have personal savings and the money equation in your control, you have a 100% chance of being as effective in the future as you are today. You see, Wealth is just the accumulated leftovers after you spend what you have. Savings can be created by spending less. You can spend less if you desire less. And you'll desire less if you care less about what others think of you. Friends, spending beyond a pretty low level of materialism is mostly a reflection of ego. It's a flashy way to spend money to show people that you have or had money. One of the most powerful ways to increase your savings isn't to raise your income, it's to raise your humility. Remember, less ego, more wealth. And you don't need a specific reason to save. You can save just for saving's sake. Predicting what you'll use your savings for assumes you live in a world where you know exactly what your future expenses will be. 
which no one does. Savings without a spending goal gives you options and flexibility, the ability to wait and the opportunity to pounce. It gives you time to think. It lets you change course on your own terms. Savings in the bank that earn 0% interest might actually generate an extraordinary return if they give you the flexibility to take a job with a lower salary but more purpose or wait for investment opportunities that come when those without flexibility turn desperate. If you have flexibility, you can wait for good opportunities, both in your career and for your investments. You'll have a better chance of being able to learn a new skill when it's necessary. You'll feel less urgency to chase competitors who can do things you can't and have more leeway to find your passion and your niche at your own pace. You can find a new routine, a slower pace, and think about life with a different set of assumptions. So start saving now. Number 11. Friends, do not aim to be coldly rational when making financial decisions. Aim to just be pretty reasonable. You are not a spreadsheet. You are a person, a screwed up emotional person. Reasonable is more realistic and you have a better chance of sticking with it for the long run. And this is what matters most when managing money. A rational investor makes decisions based on numeric facts only. A reasonable investor makes them in a conference room, surrounded by co-workers you want to think highly of you, with a spouse you don't want to let down. You see. Investing has a social component that's often ignored when viewed through a strictly financial lens. So try to be reasonable from now on when making important financial decisions. Number 12. Surprise Friends, this world is very surprising. Things don't sit still. They change with culture and generation. They are always changing and always will. No doubt, it is smart to refer to the economic and investing history. History helps us calibrate our expectations, study where people tend to go wrong, and offers a rough guide of what tends to work. But we should never use history as a definite map of the future, especially when taking financial decisions. Many investors treat historians as prophets, which is wrong. An over-reliance on past data cannot be used as a signal to future conditions. That too in the field of finance, where innovation and change are the lifeblood of progress. You see, the most important economic events of the future, things that will move the needle the most, are things that history gives us little to no guide about. They will be unprecedented events. Their unprecedented nature means we won't be prepared for them, which is part of what makes them so impactful. This is true for both scary events like recessions and wars and great events like innovation. So in such a world of uncertainty, history can be a misleading guide to the future of the economy and stock market because it doesn't account for structural changes that are relevant to today's world. That doesn't mean we should ignore history when thinking about money. If you refer history, your takeaways should be general. General things like people's relationship to greed and fear, how they behave under stress, and how they respond to incentives tending to be stable in time. The history of money is useful for that kind of stuff. But specific trends, specific trades, specific sectors, specific causal relationships about markets, and what people should do with their money are always an example of evolution in progress. Number 13. Room for Error Friends, margin of safety or room for error is the only effective way to safely navigate a world that is governed by surprises and uncertainties. There is never a moment when you are so right that you can bet every chip in front of you. The world is too uncertain for that. 
The wisdom in having room for error is acknowledging that uncertainty, randomness, and chance. Unknowns are an ever-present part of life. So give yourself room for error. You have to plan on your plan, not going according to plan. So how can you use the room for error regarding money? Well, by avoiding the single biggest point of failure with money, and that is sole reliance on a paycheck to fund short-term spending needs, with no savings to create a gap between what you think your expenses are and what they might be in the future. Number fourteen, you'll change. Friends, long-term financial planning is essential. but it is harder than it seems because both the world around you and your own goals and desires change over time you see people are poor forecasters of their future selves they are aware of how much they have changed in the past but underestimate how much their personality desires and goals are likely to change in the future so you should avoid the extreme ends of financial planning It's hard to make enduring long-term decisions when your view of what you'll want in the future is likely to shift. Assuming you'll be happy with a very low income or choosing to work endless hours in pursuit of a high one increases the odds that you'll one day find yourself at a point of regret. At every point in your life, you should aim for the moderate. Moderate annual savings, moderate free time, moderate commute and at least moderate time with your family it increases the odds of being able to stick with a plan and avoid regret if any one of those things fall to the extreme sides of the spectrum friends we should accept the reality of change and move on as soon as possible number 15 nothing is free friends Everything has a price but not all prices appear on labels. The key to a lot of things with money is just figuring out what that price is and being willing to pay it. Like everything else which is worthwhile, successful investing demands a price. But its currency is not dollars and cents. It's volatility, fear, doubt, uncertainty and regret. all of which are easy to overlook until you are dealing with them in real time the question is why do so many people who are willing to pay the price of cars houses food and vacations try so hard to avoid paying the price of good investment returns the answer is simple the price of investing success is not immediately obvious it's not a price tag you can see So when the bill comes but it doesn't feel like a fee for getting something good it feels like a fine for doing something wrong and while people are generally fine with paying fee fines are supposed to be avoided so develop the mindset that thinks of market volatility as a fee rather than a fine it will help you stick around long enough for investing gains to work in your favor Market returns are never free and never will be. They demand you pay a price like any other product. Convince yourself that the market's fee is worth it. That's the only way to properly deal with volatility and uncertainty. Realize that it's an admission fee worth paying. Number 16. Friends, all of us are playing different games here. identify what game you are playing beware of taking financial cues from people playing a different game than you are other investors have different goals than we do understand your own time horizon and do not get persuaded by the actions and behaviors of people playing different games than you are number 17 the seduction of pessimism Optimism is the best bet for most people because the world tends to get better for most people most of the time. But pessimism holds a special place in our hearts. It's intellectually captivating and it's paid more attention than optimism. 
money is present everywhere so something bad happening tends to affect everyone and captures everyone's attention faster you see there are three takeaways here number 1 real optimists don't believe that everything will be great optimism is a belief that the odds of a good outcome are in your favor over time even when there will be setbacks along the way the simple idea that most people wake up in the morning trying to make things a little better and more productive than wake up looking to cause trouble is the foundation of optimism number 2 don't fall for pessimism assuming that something ugly will stay ugly is an easy forecast to make and it's persuasive because it doesn't require imagining the world changing but problems correct and people adapt threats incentivize solutions in equal magnitude that's a common plot of economic history that is too easily forgotten by pessimists who forecast in straight lines number 3 Remember progress happens too slowly to notice but setbacks happen too quickly to ignore Growth is driven by compounding which always takes time Destruction is driven by single points of failure which can happen in seconds and loss of confidence which can happen in an instant Number 18 when you'll believe anything Friends There are two things to keep in mind when managing your money. Number 1, the more you want something to be true, the more likely you are to believe a story that overestimates the odds of it being true. There are many things in life that we think are true because we desperately want them to be true. So be watchful in what do you want to be true. Number 2, everyone has an incomplete view of the world. but we form a complete narrative to fill in the gaps most people when confronted with something they don't understand do not realize they don't understand it because they are able to come up with an explanation that makes sense based on their own unique perspective and experiences in the world however limited those experiences are coming to terms with how much you don't know means coming to terms with how much of what happens in the world is out of your control and that can be hard to accept so friends respect the mess smart informed and reasonable people can disagree in finance because people have vastly different goals and desires there is no single right answer it's just the answer that works for you So find out what works for you and get on with it. Now friends, to conclude, I'll quote these words of the author himself. No matter how we save or invest, I'm sure we'll always have the goal of independence and we'll always do whatever maximizes for sleeping well at night. We think it's the ultimate goal, the mastery of the psychology of money. But to each their own no one is crazy <laughs>